Hi, everyone. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Richard Seawalt, who is founder and managing partner of Evolution Equity Partners. Um, nice to see you, Richard. And um, we're talking about cybersecurity. And I want to just start with the place that you hold in the ecosystem. Tell us a bit more about Evolution Equity. Sure, Diane. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Great to talk to you again. So Evolution Equity Partners is a growth and early growth stage investor focused on the cybersecurity space. And it's a team that has been together for 20 years throughout, through in and throughout cycles, first building cybersecurity companies. We were a team that built a company called ABG Technologies. After that, we began investing in cybersecurity companies and essentially utilizing the playbook that we developed over that time, uh, helping companies grow and really focusing on what we do best. And that's investing and helping build best to breed cybersecurity companies. We're a team of 20, Silicon Valley, New York, uh, London and Zurich, and laser focused on one of the most important segments in software today. So let's talk about where the threats are um, right now, because um, there's obviously the general, we get the fact that data can be weaponized. We've seen bad actors, country actors, obviously individual hackers. What, where are you seeing most of the demand and where do you see some of the underappreciated risks right now? So when you look at demand for cybersecurity technology in the market today, there's four or five key drivers that are pushing that. First of all, the severity and frequency of attacks has continued to grow. Part of that, because of the activity of nation state adversaries and the orbit of actors around that, hackers and criminals. And I, I think when you look at the targets, uh, those actors are looking at what I call the soft underbelly of our society, and that's software. Software is vulnerable to the attacks of hackers, criminals, nation state adversaries. And what sits on that uh, uh, layer of software is everything that we interact day to day through in and throughout each year, whether it be uh, electricity grids, whether that be our elections, whether that be applications that we all like to use, whether that be our home networks, all of those are prone to the same vulnerabilities that make that soft underbelly highly attractive to those uh, actors. Let me interrupt one sec, Richard, if you don't mind, which is, it is it more vulnerable if it's in the cloud versus if it's a privately held um, you know, system? I mean, I'm just curious if, if it makes any difference these days. You know, cloud vulnerabilities open up more opportunities for uh, actors to have uh, 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 availability to data, have availability to networks. I think we saw a significant increase in the use of uh, cloud services, uh, an increase in digitalization after the pandemic. And because a lot of that was accelerated, some of the implementation was done uh, not in a perfect way, which opened up those vulnerabilities. And I think we're seeing the result of that in the frequency uh, of attacks uh, on cloud infrastructure. And whether that's hybrid cloud or uh, true cloud or variations of that, uh, we are in a continuum of trying to protect that platform in a way that's uh, acceptable with uh, the type of cyber posture that we demand of our organizations and government. Is there any new tactics that you're seeing that uh, surprise you, especially there are a lot of people out there who are in this space and we're used to the usual, you know, phishing and we get lots of training. What are some of the newer um tactics that you may be seeing that we should perhaps be on the lookout for? I think any investor out there, anybody who's working uh, where you're making wire transfers, you're, and that's you know just about any investor out there. It's the, the increase in frequency and sophistication of spoofing attacks. Um, there's been you know, news out there recently of uh, uh, I guess politicians who had uh, their platforms hacked and wire transfers were made improperly uh, as a result of spoofing. But this is something that has been growing 
growing through and in throughout the years. We get questions about that from investment groups on best practices there. And it's an area that involves uh, the human factor in cybersecurity and the hygiene that uh, revolves around making sure that you're delivering a wire transfer to the right person and not someone who's spoofing that person, essentially making believe that they're uh, that person. We've seen frequency of that increase over the last six months and going into 2023 in a significant way.